there were a lot of parts to the Civil Rights Act of 1964, and they were implemented at different rates, and they had different enforcement mechanisms, and they had different impacts. So one of the most salient issues right around the time of passage was the issue of public accommodations, was the issue of being able to go to restaurants, go to hotels, um, uh, go to places of entertainment uh, on, an, on a desegregated basis. And a lot of the protests in 1963 and 1964 were around issues of public accommodations. There are iconic images of people sitting in at Woolworth stores, right? That's the image you have of the 1964 Act, and there's a reason for that. It was a very salient I issue. And one of the things that's remarkable is that after the 1964 Act, public accommodations really do desegregate. Uh, and I think, in part, the idea of the 64 Act was to break the logjam of fear that if I'm the only one that desegregates, no one's going to come to my restaurant, no one's going to come to my store, they're all going to go to the segregated ones still. And I actually think, and there's evidence, that there were a fair number of people who were interested in desegregating, <laughs> who thought it'd be good for their business. To Either they thought it would be good economically, or they thought morally it was the right thing, but they were afraid to do it. And what the 64 Act does is give them cover. It says, no, you have to do this now. And once everyone is doing it, then there aren't going to be consequences in the same way because people want to go to restaurants and they want to go to the movies. Uh, and if everything is now desegregated, then you have to live in a, in a, in a desegregated way. And there aren't, there are ways, there, there could have been ways to escape it. Um, and there are private clubs and there are still ways, there are lots of ways people's lives still have segregated aspects to them. But in this major commercial sphere, there's nowhere people were going to go. This is where they were going to go. And, and so it was really successful. And I think that in other aspects, it was harder. Uh, I think there was a lot of hope that the economic incentives, that getting the best people for jobs would overwhelm one's racial discrimination or one's racial prejudices. There was a hope that once that was clear, workforces would transform. And I think to some extent that does happen. We do better utilize more of the personal resources that individuals have than we did, both by educating people better and by hiring them in, in a, a broader swath of jobs. But I don't think we've seen the total success in either education or in employment that we saw in public accommodations. 